The Fable of the Rooster and the Swallow There once was a rooster with feathers of gold. He carried his colors with pride and bravado. He reigned like a king, while the chickens adored his wonderful talent to crawl with vibrato. A traveling swallow was tired of flying and casually happened to land in the coop. The rooster was shocked and he yelled, are you trying to undermine order and peace in my troop? The swallow politely responded, I'm sorry, that's not what I want. I'm not that kind of guy. But now that I'm here and I'm not in a hurry, perhaps I can teach all of you how to fly. How dare you, small birdie, the rooster replied. I don't want to fly. What a foolish proposal. And nor do my chickens. I keep them inside. They have to be constantly at my disposal. Okay, said the swallow. Good luck to you, stranger. I don't want to mess with your personal things, but please keep in mind that you're living in danger until you succeed to develop your wings. Along came the farmer the very next day. The rooster fought bravely. The battle was vicious. Some call it unfair, but I heard people say that this coco vin was extremely delicious. Hi, I'm Walter, and I'm a swallow on a mission. I'm here to give you wings. Wings that will make you fly and prepare you for your future. And we all know it's hard to make predictions, especially about the future. In fact, the only true thing we can say about the future is that it will be different from today. So at least my talk will be a wake-up call for you to prepare yourself for change, however that change may look like. And that's especially true for the future of work. Here's what we know for sure. The old jobs from the past will be replaced by new jobs in the future. And most of our industries will be severely disrupted. World Economic Forum foresees that by 2022, and that's in less than two years from now, 42% of all the core skills required to perform existing jobs will change. This means that in an average company of, let's say, 150 people, 63 among them will have to reskill within the next two years. And they also predict that one billion jobs worldwide, that's almost one third of all the existing jobs, will be completely transformed by technology within the next decade. Technology. The magic word is out. In every scenario we imagine for the future, technology will always play a leading role. It has always been like that, even in the past. But the difference with previous industrial revolutions is that this time, not only the so-called lower jobs are in danger. With the fast evolvement of AI and machine learning, even the most highly skilled professionals are replaceable. Imagine computers being better than any experienced doctor in diagnosing diseases they exist today. Complex calculations and constructions that only the best engineers were able to perform in the past, AI has taken over. And even the academic world of education is in danger. What if tomorrow professors will become processors? Now, that all sounds very depressing, doesn't it? Well, it shouldn't. Because if we realize that whatever work we are doing, and whatever industry we work in, lifelong learning will become an integral part of our life. There's not so much to worry about. All we have to do is keep updating ourselves, keep our eyes and ears open wide, and embrace an eager mindset of learning and evolving day after day after day. Now, here's a model that you might recognize. The professional of the future is T-shaped. And like any T, it has two axes. 
On the vertical X, we go deep. This is all about knowledge. And as we all know, in our fast-changing uh, world, knowledge evolves quickly. What we've learned yesterday might not be true anymore today and will certainly be different tomorrow. So we have to keep updating ourselves on the work we do and the industry we work in. So we need skills that we call work and industry-specific skills. You might also know them as hard skills. But my focus is on the horizontal X. Here we find the skills that are independent from the work we do and independent from the industry we work in, because you need them everywhere. And that's why we call them work and industry neutral skills. You might also know them as behavioral skills or soft skills, but in fact, they're all but soft. It's in fact these skills that make us grow as a person in our job. And that's why I like to call them growth skills. And if we add that to what we already have, we come to the word work and industry neutral growth skills. And I know that's a mouthful and I don't expect you to remember that. What I'd like you to remember is the acronym that comes out of it. WINGS or WING skills. Now, here's the good news. Unlike the hard skills, the knowledge skills on the vertical X, those growth skills or wing skills are much less sensitive to the changing world. And that's because they're intrinsically human. Once you've developed them, they will stick with you for the rest of your life. Wherever you go, whatever job you might do in the future, you will always have your wings with you. Now, a lot of service and research has been done on which of these growth skills will be the most in demand in the future. And I'm sure you might have seen one or more of these lists on LinkedIn, World Economic Forum, uh, the academic world, other organizations. And from my side, I have analyzed all these lists, hoping to find the differences as well as the overlaps. But what I was really looking for were the roots, the fundamentals. Just like you have blue, red and yellow, the primary colors, with which you can compile all the other colors. Or the primary flavors that compose our entire palette of flavors. So I wondered, would it also be possible to detect a fixed number of primary skills that are the roots of all the other growth skills? And guess what? Yes, it is. And I'm so proud and happy to share this with you today for the very first time. So here are wings, the five basic skills you'll ever need in the future. They are creativity, critical thinking, self-management, social intelligence, and attention management. Now, let me explain each of them one by one. Creativity. To the question, what is creativity? The best answer I can give is coming up with ideas that are at the same time new and useful. Creative people are problem solvers. And they're never happy or satisfied with the first answer or solution that they think of. They are driven by curiosity and they look at things from different angles. They connect things that were never connected before all to make things better. That's creativity. Number two, critical thinking. And at first sight, you might think, oh, this is just the opposite of creativity. But it isn't. Creativity and critical thinking complement each other, like the yin and the yang that keep you in balance. As a creative thinker, you don't think, simply accept all the arguments and, uh, and answers that you're given, but you analyze and question the facts. As a creative thinker, you're good in making the right decisions and in developing opinions, visions and strategies. Number three, self-management. This one is composed by two components. And the first one is knowing who you really are and what you really want. And once that's all clear, the second component comes in, working towards the goals you want to achieve. So, in other words, self-management makes people confident and target-focused. 
and as a result, relaxed and resistant to change. It's the most natural way to find your personal everyday motivation. Number four, social intelligence. And this one is closely related to what we know emotion, emotional intelligence. So this is all about communicating, connecting and collaborating with others. Social intelligent people are good in um, listening and responding, in motivating and giving feedback. They are able to convince people and to create a very positive group dynamic. And the last one is attention management. And you might also know this skill under the name of time management. But as you cannot manage time, you're obliged to divide this time into useful moments of attention. So yes, this is all about organizing yourself and finding your natural flow and rhythm to enhance your daily uh, productivity and proactiveness. Because as we all know, failing to plan is planning to fail. Creativity, critical thinking, self-management, social intelligence, attention management the roots of all the skills that appear on the list I showed you earlier. And let's take a look at some of the uh, skills that appear on these lists. For instance, complex problem solving. It's listed number one as the skill of the future by World Economic Forum. Well, in fact, complex problem solving is based on two of the wing skills. Creativity on the one hand and uh, critical thinking on the other hand. Another one that pops up regularly is conflict management. This one is based on three of the wing skills. Social intelligence, creativity and critical thinking again. And to give you a last example, leadership. This one is fed by five, all five of the wing skills because a good leader has to be able to think out of the box. He has to make the right decisions and develop the right visions and strategies. He has to be self-confident and motivated. And he has to be a good communicator and be able to motivate others. And last but not least, he has to be well organized and proactive. Now, as I mentioned earlier, these uh, grow skills or wing skills are much less uh, sensitive to a changing world than the knowledge skills. But that doesn't mean they are easier to acquire. Some people even claim that you cannot learn or improve them. But that's just because they are trying to use the same learning method as they do with the knowledge skills, which is totally wrong, because wings are a mindset. And what do I mean by that? Take creativity as an example as one of the wing skills. Everyone is bo born with a certain amount of creativity. That's at the first level. That's what we call a talent. Now, whatever amount of creative talent you have, you can improve it by learning the mechanisms behind creativity. So it becomes a skill, and that's the second level. You can dig up that skill whenever you think you need it, just like you do with a knowledge skill. But the wing skill goes further. You have to practice it every day, in every situation possible. So it becomes a habit, a reflex a natural way of thinking, acting and reacting. And then you reach that third level. That's what we call a mindset. And the same goes with all other four wing skills. Once you reach that third level, it will, be, it, will be, it will become part of yourself. And I even dare say that it will change your personality and your life beyond your work. So let me wrap up with three pieces of advice for your future. Number one, never stop learning. Always update yourself on the changes that relate to the work you do and the industry you work in, so you stay relevant. Number two, develop your wings. Improve your creativity, your critical thinking, your self-management, your social intelligence, your attention management, so you keep growing as a person in your job. And number, number three, go even further. Make your wings a mindset so they become part of yourself and your personality. And don't be a rooster, be the swallow. And I'm sure you will face the future with confidence. Thank you so very much. <laughs>